Out of all of the bugs that I have encountered with my Google Pixel 6, this charging bug feature thing in regards to how fast this device charges may be one of the most frustrating. I'm gonna enjoy this delicious cup of Vietnamese coffee. If you guys wanna see a video about where this coffee comes from and like the coffee farmers, I'll have a link to making this video up here. I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit today about my experience using this fantastic Ugreen 100 watt PPS GAN charger. I wanna tell you about what my experience was using that in the real world to charge my Google Pixel 6. But first, I'm gonna tell you my name. And my name is Mitchell. I'm fluent in tech, so you don't need to be. I will have a review coming up of that 100 watt charger. And if you guys just wanna purchase one, I'll have links to where you can do so in the description down below. Now, when Google came out with the Google Pixel 6, they were really proud to say that they had these advancements in charging and that you could charge your device from zero to 50% in 30 minutes. Of course, utilizing a PPS charger at 30 watts. And I wanted to put this to the test and see whether or not it would actually charge my device that quickly. I doubt most users actually let their phone get to 0%. So we did a real world 0% to 100% charge test with this device. I charged this device into the PPS compatible outlets on that charger, and I charged a variety of other devices from it to kind of stress test this charger and see if it got hot. Before I did this test, I checked to make sure that this could supply enough wattage when it was being used for all of these ports. And thankfully, if all of the ports are being used, the top port will still support 45 watts with the PPS standard and USB-C power delivery. So no issues with that. Notice that within my first 30 minutes of charging this device from 10%, it got to 50% in about 24 and a half minutes or 25 minutes, which is normal since we started at 10%. But after that 30 minute mark, when this device was already at, like after it was at 50%, within 30 minutes at 10%, it didn't continue charging quick. In fact, after 30 minutes on a PPS compatible charger that would supply 45 watts, this device had charged 55%, even though we started 10% higher than dead. And when we ran this test all the way to the end, we got a full charge time of well over an hour. In fact, when we were at the 90% point, I just said, screw it. I didn't want to wait around for the phone to charge more. And I had the phone off. Now I know that Google has had some features in their adaptive charging and their adaptive battery management. And I think that these are awesome features. Samsung and the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE, which I've been reviewing for the past few months, have similar features. With Samsung, you can actually have the device stop charging at 85%, and that is a toggle that you can do. You can disable or enable super fast charging with the device so that you theoretically have the 18 watt quick charge three standard that you can use if you have a quick charge three standard. You can use the 25 watt super fast charger that you can buy from Samsung, or you can just use the standard Samsung charger that came with that device, which I believe is at 15 watts. And you have a ton of versatility, or you can just use a two amp five volt charger like the some of the iPhone ones, and that will charge your device at 10 watts. But with Samsung, you have these options. Even though I had these toggles turned off on my Pixel 6, if I was to really need my device to charge up to 85% quickly, I wouldn't have been able to. Editor Mitchell here. I wanted to do an experiment and put the Pixel 6 on and off this fast charger, let it charge 10, 15%, take it off the fast charger, put it back on to simulate like short burst rapid charging. And actually, if you're leaving the device on to charge for like less than 15 minutes, the device will charge to the point that the device gets kind of warm to the touch in like 20 C, maybe 60 degree environments. Now I'm all in favor of Google allowing us to protect our batteries and our devices and extending the lifespan of our devices. I think it's something that Apple does and it is great. 
but this is a Pixel device. And Pixel devices are supposed to be bought from the power users, from the nerds, from the people like me that want those kinds of settings. But it's really clear that in this new world of Pixel that Google is creating, Google is doing their best job of creating an iPhone-like experience for the average user. Now, whether or not you think this is a bug or you think this is a feature or you're like myself and you're not sure how to feel about it right now, I think that you should know that if you're trying to choose between a Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, which is now on sale on Amazon, and I will have links to that, which is the same price as a Google Pixel 6, if you're someone that comes from the world of fast charging, of being able to charge your device, from zero to full in under an hour, the Pixel just might not be for you unless Google gives us the ability to turn these toggles on and off. I wanna go ahead and end out this video here. I'd just like to thank you, Green, for sending me this charger. I really appreciate it. Also, I wanna note that there is no way that thermal limitations were a variable when I did this test. Current ambient temperature here is around 18 degrees and overheating isn't really a problem right now with this current climate. Till next time, it's been Mitchell, peace.